Hi, and welcome to our video on the graph of the sine function. So what do we do when we're graphing the function of the sine? Well, this goes back to the idea of the unit circle. And let's sketch a small unit circle out right here. So this unit circle is just going to keep popping up in trigonometry. And we want to really make sure that we understand what's going on here. So that's my unit circle. And in one of our last videos, we, we talked about um, these four points really key points. And we talked about radians as well. So here we're at zero, right? So this point is zero, one. Oh, excuse me. I flipped it. This should actually be one comma zero, right? Because one refers to the x-axis, so we're going one. And we're not going up or down. And, and here this is zero comma one, going up one, but not left or right. Negative one zero over here. And down here, you know, these points are just reflected on the origin and here reflected as well, um, this point is 0, negative 1. Okay, so those are four key points. And also, we talked in another video about the idea of radians. Now, in, in, a, in a unit circle, when you see pi, that's referring to 180 degrees. That's the relationship in a unit circle. And we're not going to go into that in depth here, but, but that idea is very important. So here we have 0, right? This angle right here is 0. But here, we're going at 90 degrees, so that's that's not pi, it's, it's pi over 2. So at this point, we can think of pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Over here, we have 180 degrees, so just pi. And here we have um, 3 pi over 2. And I guess I kind of have that memorized, but this is 270 degrees. So 3 times 180 is, is well, 3 times 180 is 3 times 100, which is 300, plus 3 times 80, which is uh, 240. So 540 divided by 2, that's... 270 degrees, and then a full rotation over here, oops, with this point, it was zero, but we're going back to the beginning as this is a circle. This is 2 pi. Now what's kind of hinted here in the circle is that if every sine, cosine, and tangent value can be represented, can be represented in a circle, I'm talking too fast there, um, then we have this idea of a cycle, right? There's definitely a cycle when you're graphing the trig functions, because otherwise, I mean, why, how would we be able to use a circle to represent all the values of a function if it wasn't some kind of a cycle, right? So every every sine value, we talked about this as well in another video, the sine values are equal to the y values of the coordinates, just as the cosine is equal to the x values. So, so what does all this information do? What does this come together as? Well, we can just look at those four key points to get a really great estimation of the graph of sine. So what we can do is we can have over here, we have our thetas, right? And those are um, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Those four key points, 0, and then pi over 2, 90 degrees, and then pi, which is 180, 3 pi over 2, and then um, 2 pi. So that's the full rotation. What we can do is kind of graph what the value of sine is at those points. But let me just move this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so so what happens at 0? Well, at 0 degrees or 0 radians, pi, it's pi, sine is the y value of the coordinate on the circle. So it's 0. So at 0, sine is 0. Sine of theta is 0. Let me actually write sine of theta. So we're Right, that's where we're plugging theta into sine. So now when we plug in pi over 2, what's the sine of pi over 2? Well, that's the y value up here. So that's 1. So when, when um, we have the sine of pi over 2, we have 1. The sine of pi, which is over here, is the y value here. It's back to 0. And then the sine of 3 pi over 2, well, what's that? It's down here at negative 1. And then back to the sine of 2 pi, which is 0. And we can keep going. What's the sine of 2 pi and then another pi over 2? So what is that? It's 5 pi over 2. I mean, we can keep rotating here. I think it's 5 pi over 2. I'm right? unable to think right now. But anyway, so then what do we do with this? Well, we graph it. On our x-axis, we're going to put our thetas. right? And usually you'll see this in radians. And again, the reason we even bother dealing with radians and this conversion is because for later problems um, and for more difficult problems, these radian measures tend to be a lot neater. So we're, we're going through all this for a reason. And then the, the y value is going to be our sine of theta. So let me label that. On our x-axis right here, 
these are our theta values, and our, our y-axis right here, we have the sine of theta. And you'll get for, more familiar with these functions as we go along, but some key characteristics of sine is that at zero, sine is also zero. That's what we have right here. So we have at zero, sine, the height is zero as well. But then what happens at pi over two? That's kind of our next interval, pi over two. And then we have pi, and then three pi over two. Oops, this is a little bit too thick of a pen. And three pi over two. And then over here we have two pi. So what's gonna happen here? Well, if we map these values, at pi over two, sine is one. At pi, sine is zero again. I'm just going here, looking at these values. At three over pi over two, sine is negative one. It's down here. And then at two pi, sine is zero. And if we fill in all the values in between, we get a curve kind of like this. And that's the beginning of sine. Now if we kept extending it in both directions, in the negative direction, we would see this pattern happen again. It would just keep going. This is my best attempt at drawing it. And if we kept going this way, it would continue. But the point here, one, one important thing to, to note is that um, it's never going above one or below negative one. It's confined within that range. And that's called the amplitude, which we'll get to. Now you can have sine oscillate and repeat above those amplitudes, but here for just sine of theta, it's gonna be bound in there. And in the next video, we'll look at cosine.